Okay. <laughs> nope. Here we go. <laughs> That's as good as it's getting. This is a little behind the scenes look of how um it's just like on Survivor when they're setting up the camera, it's just like, like this, that. Oh yeah, just behind uh, the scenes always, yeah. <laughs> Setting up, setting up the camera for the confessionals. They just they just hand it to the person who's who's talking, just like now, set this up. And we just need this shot where you're like mirrored in the water and it needs to like yeah. have a perfect reflection. Also, if it accentuates your body in any way, um, <laughs> we need that. We need that for the viewers. Like they're, they're already answering the question, they're in a regular area. Like, uh yeah. could you just stop? Let's just I don't like the I don't like this. Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> Hold that thought. Do, do you think that they? Do you think that happens? I bet it does. I don't know. I wonder. I don't know. I've never really heard that much in the insight of like how the confessionals go down. Yeah. I just know they're always like just. It's just a part of the everyday life. It's just that you know you're yeah. gonna get taken away yeah. for these. Yeah. But that would be interesting to know how much time is spent setting up the shot. Like. <laughs> yeah. All right there. Okay, let's get your, your face right between these two trees. Nice. 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 All right. Welcome, one and all. We're back again. We all right. We finished Survivor Africa. Yes, we did indeed. Season three of Survivor. Mm-hmm. And what a journey it was. Had some some really low lows. And yeah. Yeah. I'd say I'd dumb. say probably probably the lowest lows I would say of maybe the show so far. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um definitely. But then thanks to producer intervention, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Um it turned into pretty a pretty interesting season, I'd say, overall. So Yeah, and that's also the interesting thing about Survivor is that you can have like either dud seasons or really dud moments, you know, because you just, yeah. you have this group of people and you, they could just suck. It It's hard to predict what so many different people are going to, how they're going to gel or not gel or interact. And sometimes the dynamics there cause it to just sort of fall flat. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you'd think like the conflict is interesting, but then other times the conflict just isn't, actually really that interesting to watch because you know how it's gonna go down like from the get-go yeah which was basically this the beginning of the season in a nutshell <laughs> yeah with the generation gap being established yeah. real early on and then it was like yeah. okay we are literally not budging from this at all yeah we're just gonna vote down these lines until we're through so they're like production's like no nah. We're gonna put this epic preview. The game will change forever. Yeah, yeah. They used movie trailer guy from the, <laughs> from like the the nineties. Nineties movie trailer guy came in. And was like the game will change forever, and it's awesome. Swapped up the tribes, and suddenly you see how much the game can change when you're not. Uh, people fall into these like these same positions and get comfortable in these these roles, and then you shake it up a little bit. You get some interesting stuff. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, also part of what a lot of people talk about with the season, apparently, and I mean, it was, it was kind of talked about um, throughout is just like the really poor conditions they were going through and people were just miserable. And so that's going to make the players actually have low energy. And it's also something to consider when you think about like strategies. Mm. They're not going to be strategizing as well if they're like, not just getting really enough food and they're not enough energy they're just gonna and there's not gonna be as much interesting conversations going on if you're just like miserable the whole time yeah i think the difference between because because i often think of like uh the outback as because the conditions there were really crazy um but that was like a different kind of conditions where like in this one um it's just the heat the heat and the humidity and like how hot it gets out there mm -hmm. um uh, wherever, where was it they were again? Was it, I wanted to say Uganda, but I don't think that's, I think, I think, it, was think, Ken, I think it was Kenya. Kenya, Kenya. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just the, just the heat, 
that just you could tell was getting to them where water was like the most important thing so much so that they were like getting some of them were like getting water from a mud hole basically that's how desperately that you needed water and like it started with the saburu and baran tribes and yep. one of the tribes had a lot better because i don't know wh wh which tribe was the one that had they had to go a while to get to the water right yeah i can't i can't remember off the top yeah honestly. i knew one of them had to go once, far. Once, once they became moto magi or moto magi yeah and i was like that name is awesome for completely reasons like not not associated with like what that actually translates to just in my mind i'm thinking that sounds like a steampunk thing mm -hmm. i'm totally going to use that in a story but anyway that's <laughs> that's neither here nor there i don't i don't remember which tribe um i don't remember which tribe it was but yeah one of them one of them was having a huge issue uh with getting water for a really long time and yeah it's it's similar to the australian outback for sure and that there's like uh, it was a like really the conditions were highlighted a lot more than when the first season mm -hmm. really ramped up. Um, I mean, dangerous animals, of course they had to push that. Yeah. Yeah. You're out, you're out in, uh, I'm assuming they didn't really say this, but I was assuming they're probably out on like living on one of the preserves out there or, or close by to one. And the reason that I say that is because those preserves are like hundreds and hundreds of miles, like, of mm -hmm. of wilderness essentially um and they're just protected areas so I, the reason that i'm assuming that is just so they can have easier access to like emergency people i don't know that could be just me complete speculation i could be totally wrong mm -hmm. about that but but even still i mean yeah there's there's a there's there's the, a real danger where like there was one night where they were all out there and then uh or they were they were sleeping and people keeping watch like there's a lion that's like right there. There's like multiple lions, and they're all kind of like, "What's going on in uh, in the enclosure here?" Mm -hmm. So um, that was pretty pretty intense. And at the and, same time, I kind of think for some reason the um, the location, the scenery didn't work as well for me as as maybe the last couple seasons because it all just kind of seemed a little bland, a little much. The, and I think I think the I think the problem with that is. Um, I would agree. Uh, I think some of the problem with that is just that you kind of have to like to get the full to get like the full experience of like that sunrise or that sunset out in the out in the plains of Africa. You really kind of have to be there to like soak it in because there's only so much that I mean, like you said, it, there's only so much kind of interesting shots that you can do the nature shots weren't always the nature shots of the animals were really great but most of the other ones were it was kind of like oh it's the we're here again it, i kind yeah. of agree with, i kind of agree with that yeah i mean yeah. there were some there were some hills around um kind of a way i think when they combined camps i think there was like a hill that they were, would like go up on or something and and look at so but yeah but overall it's kind of like they're stuck behind this little fence fenced yeah. area for the most part and it's just like they had to milk every time they could get an animal in the background they had to milk that shot because <laughs> yeah. it makes it look better yeah but you definitely saw the conditions getting to people's like like Lindsay especially just like all these emotional outbursts yeah and well i mean uh, even from day one when um uh oh what's yeah her what's her name was like almost going unconscious sorry i'm yeah. terrible with names sometimes <laughs> with this but diane i think it was diane yeah and then jesse got sick as well yeah yeah they were both feeling the heat and feeling the, the yeah, dehydration and, of course, and everything of course, diane her sickness sparked the whole uh beans the can of beans controversy <laughs> which is like the stupidest thing that that's that's what they had to dwell on because that's how interesting the beginning of the game was they had to talk about beans it was the can of beans yeah rather than um what was it the previous season where it was the you have the beef jerky <laughs> jerky oh, wow. beef jerky beef jerky gate <laughs> in this one they had uh, bean gate yeah so ultimately we have this generation gap uh and even before the game the game changing twists we had the first tie that didn't have any previous votes cast against each person so yep. they had an epic tiebreaker quiz which was the lamest thing 
<laughs> I was so we were both so deflated at the end of that episode. I was like, that was the lamest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Like, because it was just like, and and that was I think that was that the time was that the time right before the 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 swap the the game changing swap. Mm-hmm. That was the episode before, and I think I almost want to say like when that happened, I almost want to feel like they're just like, all right, we got we got to think of something because that well, right there it was it was two episodes. There was one after. Oh, was there one after? Okay, because like it was from there. It was there is where it was deter- It was basically determined that the the younger generation would win essentially in that in that group. Mm-hmm. Um, because they didn't they weren't tied anymore. So it was. Uh, oh wait, no, it might it might have been the episode after. No, I thought it was. I thought it was the episode after, but I I could be remembering that wrong. Uh, okay, Linda was voted out after Carl. Oh, okay. That was okay. still with the same tribe, I believe, though. I th- I think yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Crazy Linda. And we were and we were just like, well, this is gonna be a big shocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we all kind of knew exactly what was gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you don't want too much predictability like that. And yeah. So that was a nice little twist. Merged everybody into Moto Magi. Do they say Magi or Magi? I, I think they call it Moto Magi. Is what they called it. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, that that's again. There's the element of luck and survivor where, you know, the young people kind of got the short end of the stick here. Poor, poor Silas, who, who we love so much. And <laughs> he got, he got, he got brought to the other tribe and was just voted off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was it, was he the first one? Yeah. He was the, yeah. he was the first one after the, um, after the swap. Yeah. Was Silas. Yeah. Yep. No, no, it was not a, it was, a, it wasn't a big surprise and, can't say I was too uh, too sorry to see that happen. And then we had Lindsay go out. Then we had Clarence go out, mm. of course, who uh, we thought was going to be voted out episode one. Yeah, it, and, it uh, like it, considering how much they were talking up how how much the beans were the biggest deal ever. It was the biggest mm-hmm. controversy. After that is when it started to get pretty interesting. That's when the uh, whole Lex paranoia came about. And yes, Kelly was like, voted even, though, off. even though, oh yeah, that's right because of that. Yeah, that and she was the first. Uh, she was the first jury member. Yeah, because because uh, Clarence was the week before, I think. Whatever the details are slipping out now. This is not <laughs> yeah. <it's> not, <laughs> yep, yeah, the first member of the jury she was. Okay. And, yeah, that was the, the and that's the. I think to me that was when it. I even though. I was I became very critical of Lex after that because he was just like I'm going with my gut. My gut is telling me my guts never led me wrong, and he was like so completely wrong. <laughs> that actually made this that made the season a lot more interesting. Just his complete paranoia that everyone's out to get me, or or someone someone's out to get me, or like someone's lying about me. Mm-hmm. It made for a lot more interesting w- watching because like you had no idea. You basically had no idea what was going to happen next because. When you get into that state of mind, you can either fly off the handle or be a little bit more reserved, but still be like really paranoid, paranoid, which is kind of what he was because he still was trying to play. Hey, I'm the leader, but also I got to find out who that is that's coming after me. And yeah, that was uh... so like he he played a huge part in that decision, obviously, uh, yeah. getting Kelly out. But also it never would have happened if Brandon did not flip over. He could have stayed with Kelly, went the other side. If he stayed with his side, they would have been able to vote out. Would, would it have been Lex? So it was going to be Lex, right? I think so, yeah. And that's the big game changer right there. That would have changed the entire rest of the game. Yeah. But Brandon made made this probably the worst decision he could have made, honestly. Yeah. Because he was instantly I... voted out the, the next tribal. So. <laughs> yeah, that was that was so strange. That was really yeah. We we were both like questioning. And we were like, man, if you're playing the waiting game, that was not the that was not the time to make the move. Because mm-hmm. um, it it was playing it was playing a lot too. Because like other members were were ma- were playing the game a little bit more passively. Like, um, well, a lot of the older folks I think were playing. I mean, not to say that they weren't strategizing because they were, but they were playing a little bit more sneaky game, like a pa- like a little bit more passive kind of like if I stay out of sight out of mind then but also just do my part 
vote alongside people. Um, they didn't really get the ire of anybody, so they were kind of playing a passive game. But that made him instantly just such a untrustworthy person. <laughs> mm-hmm. At the same time, I mean, kudos to Brandon for at least like he was, he came to play at least you could tell. Yeah, like that's true. That's he true. played it hard, and I mean, he was clearly playing like with not not just for the motions because he just immediately stabbed his friends in the back like first chance he got. <laughs> yeah, and. I mean, to, I admire, to I admire him, them to further yeah. himself in the game, but I admire yeah. someone at least playing the game hard, even if it's not the best uh, yeah. choice. You know, his heart was in it. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Some because some people just don't even think about it. like I don't even know who I'm voting right now. I'm at tribal mm-hmm. council, and it's like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't remember who it was that said that, but somebody said that at one point. And they're like, I don't know who I'm voting for. I'm here at Tribal Council when uh, Jeff was asking the question. I'm like, you, you can, what do you mean you <laughs> yeah, don't know who you're it. voting for? So ultimately, after that, you had you had Frank go out. Yeah. You had you had Young Kim go out. Yeah. And then you had Teresa go out, which Teresa was one that like really benefited from that swap. She she managed to make it to the final five mm. when she probably would have just been picked off one of the next people yeah. early on. Um, but, and she, she played it, played hard as well. Mm-hmm. She tried to make that move there, but ultimately couldn't get it to happen. Uh, and it had, it was a really interesting final four, I think with Tom, Lex, old Kim. Yeah. And Ethan. Yeah. It was a, it was a cool mix of old and young in, in yeah. the end there. Yeah. It was, a, it was, a. I I did like that. That final group was really cool. And very different, uh, like play styles and everything is interesting um and they were all and they were all pretty respectful those final four were all pretty respectful of each other too there wasn't really any like they all of their all of their rivals i guess so to say were all kind of behind them Mm -hmm. you know or like the more i guess the more um contentious members of the tribe were all kind of off the wayside i mean you could consider lex one of the more contentious members because of his paranoia, but yeah, so they, but they were all pretty respectful of each other. So, so at the final four, uh, they had the that was when they had the challenge where they had the quiz about the uh, jury members, right? Yes, yep, yep. And shout out to Reddit user Tugford who let me know this interesting fact, which I, I never knew. Um, actually, after the game, it was found out that. Lex was actually right on the final question where they asked about the piercings. Yeah. Uh, they had Kelly as the answer, but he said Lindsay, but Lindsay apparently also didn't have any piercings. Oh. And so theoretically, they would have tied there. They would have had a tiebreaker, and he could have won that immunity right there. Interesting. And so what, what producers ended up doing as a result of that that mistake they realized they ended up giving both Tom and Lex the runner up prize as well. No kidding. That's because, awesome. Good because they them. didn't you theoretically don't know what would have happened after that point if Lex had won. Huh. Well that's uh, you know, that's that's pretty good on them that they're they're holding up to uh to what they have to do there, you know. So yeah, um, so like that's good. That's that, that's good. I'm glad that they did that. And that's a game changer if Lex had won that that immunity, like he definitely mm. had a chance of winning that final immunity. I mean, he was, he won a lot. Yeah. All he did to do yeah. would hold, was hold on longer than Kim there at the end. Yeah. Um, and also, it's like if Lex had won immunity, then that changes everything. Would they have voted out Tom at that point, or would they have stuck together instead and voted out mm. Kim instead? And you would have had Tom, Ethan, and Lex as the final three. That would have been interesting if that's how it panned out as well. Mm, yeah that that as well yeah but yeah that's that's really interesting wow i didn't i guess i didn't really well because i remember when we were we were doing that we were all we were both guessing kind of like who it was and we were both kind of like yeah did Lindsay have piercings i couldn't really, <laughs> no remember. Couldn't really remember but apparently it, thanks thanks to that reddit user that's that's really cool information yeah so, so that's yeah that's something but ultimately it came down to ethan and kim in the end and it was pretty much Kim. Well, Kim won that final immunity, 
and pretty much decided whether to take Ethan or or Lex to the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Kim even basically said on the show that she she thought she was deciding basically who who was going to win because she didn't think she would win against either of them. Mm. And so he she takes Ethan to the end because she yep. just likes him more, I guess. I guess so. Yeah, she was like, it's picking between two sons. I love them both equally. Perfect. But apparently, she, but apparently she loved Ethan a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> and I I'm I'm thinking Lex would have won. I mean, Ethan won five to two there in the end. Yeah, it's. I think it might have been. It might have been a four three with him, but I think he still would have won. Mm-hmm. I think he might have been able to swing one of the other people. But that would, that would have been a really interesting outcome in the season, especially because Lex has definitely played a lot more active role in the season. Mm-hmm. He steered a lot more of it. Ethan was a lot more passive and like overall, like kind of an underwhelming winner because he didn't, you know, make these big plays or anything. He, he was. was kinda... He was the introvert winner. Yeah. Like really, I mean, he like self admitted, like he he didn't get to know some people just because he either just didn't gel with them or, you know, he's just a quiet guy, and you can kind of get that from most of their interactions. Like the time where, um, oh, what was what Frank was like sh- was like spouting off. He's like, I'm a conservative, and he's mm-hmm. like all about like his right wing stuff, and it was and it was just him just like eating the eating the food. He's just like. <laughs> Just very uncomfortably being like, I, I'm not saying anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let him go. I'm not gonna get up and go away. I'm, I'm just gonna be a respectful person and sit here and not say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I, I could see people saying that he was an underwhelming. I, I think he was deserving, but he definitely did play a lot more passive game than than the other two winners certainly. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, anything interesting from the final like jury question you can think of i mean i know ultimately brandon votes against ethan because of his answer to his question where he's just like who's the least deserving to be there or to win it's like what it was you (laughs) You. (laughs) (laughs) he just thought i guess he just thought brandon was that much of a hater he was like i don't have a chance at brandon's vote or like (laughs) or or lazy or whatever Probably, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, you he was just being honest. So you don't answer that honestly if you think yeah. <laughs> you should. You shouldn't, but he did. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like. I'm trying to think of uh, all the final questions. Kelly, you know, what did Kelly say? Kelly had this whole thing. Yeah, she had like this whole spiel. Oh, hers was a number, and the number uh, was about. It was a number between one and one thousand, and she was looking for the closest to the number of the classroom that Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Had or no, the number of the hotel room that Mrs. Robinson had in uh, the graduate because that's her favorite movie of all time, which makes a lot of sense with the uh, when they were going through like who put on their thing is like talents are like um, controlling men and la la la. And it's like I'm putting two and two together here, like the graduate <laughs> where it's <laughs> where the older lady takes advantage of Dustin Hoffman. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good movie, by the way, but that makes. <laughs> She it's, really, uh, she really pulled a Greg there. It was, a, it was a Greg, it was a Gregish move. We don't really know what, we don't really know what, what did Greg ever say what his number was or whatever? Just like no, was it, his number between one and ten or or what was it? I forget what it was. I think it was one and ten. Yeah. But and then there was always the question of like, would, wouldn't he have voted for Rich anyway? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, uh, Kelly, just in the reunion, she's like, "Yeah, I just wanted to kind of like a final f you to them, you know? They put me there." She's like, yeah, "It's like okay, like, don't don't you think that's kind of disrespectful to the game? You don't care?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, she had she had reason because she was she was just out because of a scapegoat, basically. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they weren't. I feel like those two weren't that well. They weren't really, yeah. I guess they weren't. They weren't really, but I think because they were sided with Lex. But she, kind of... she, she only hated Ethan because she didn't take the time to to get to know her. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. There, there was, like I said, it was, um, it was, it was definitely an interesting group that originally how they were sorted didn't it didn't really work for interesting television for like to begin with i think the one group with with big tom and clarence because that was a whole thing for for a little bit mm-hmm. um 
that group was a little bit more interesting to watch. The other one was just was just so dull because you knew exactly what was going to happen. It was just the generation gap thing, and because um, the young kids aren't pulling their weight, and the older the adults are all grumbling about how this generation's corrupt, and it was just like it just wasn't it just wasn't enjoyable to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like once that once that got switched up and they started doing more more. Uh, I because I really liked the um this time around I really liked the uh the incentive rewards or whatever or the or the bonus rewards that they got during the challenges mm -hmm. um like where they got to go in and bar you know get as much money as they could for a goat or um they get to go um get to do stuff with um I don't remember if it was UNICEF or they get to do stuff for the for the uh, AIDS relief um like that stuff was just really awesome it was really really cool stuff yeah and a lot of, really a, a lot of a focus on the culture in this season too yeah i i, I thought that was really really good because especially because like you think the show the show it does it hasn't really always been really great at, at least the last two seasons you don't really get like a sense of of the culture much but like this one particularly because uh, a western audience just doesn't have that much of an understanding of culture in Kenya. So the fact that they were able to do as much as they did and able to go in and see that, I think it it's it's cool because it gets to broaden the you know the a huge audience's horizons a little bit and get them to open their eyes a little bit more to to see what another culture is like. Even just even just for like ten minutes in a program, yeah. you know, that's I think that's cool. Um, and I like that they did that. So, and with that, I think we we both commented on how much we really liked the music this season too. Oh, that was so good. And we we've all I mean we always talk about like how how much we like the music, but the music was just so good this yeah, season. The African inspired really was. music is like it's so it's such a unique style. So like they really had to take advantage of it for this because I feel like even thinking of like any other place they could have survivor at it's hard to think of one that would be make for a more distinct and unique style than africa mm, yeah it was it was such a cool sound yeah a lot of vocal stuff it was just it was really great so yeah <clears throat> so overall started off season started off really low came up a bit mm -hmm. and then uh, ended pretty well you know I'd say, yeah I'd, I'd say yeah i'd say like I can't. I, I don't know how mirrored this is, so I don't want to be like, yeah, it was like, yeah, uh, uh -huh. it was, yeah, it was kind of down here, and then it kind of had a, but then I'd say it came up. It came up pretty good. I, 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 I was enjoying the the it quite a bit more, especially once the once the swap happened and then once the merge happened. So good on the producers for for figuring that out. That was a good. That was a really good move. Yeah, good move. <laughs> uh, what what kind of season would we be dealing with if they didn't do that? I wonder. You'd have a uh, bunch, of, bunch of young brats in the end. Silas is the winner. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope not. That would have been awful. But um, well, I mean, it, I mean, it would have been interesting because like the, none of them were pulling their weight like at all. Like it just it they made. I mean, obviously they they are only showing us so much on the cameras and stuff, but they really made a point of like showing them sleeping into like like well into daylight hours, mm -hmm. like every day um which almost makes you think like would they have like l like lived <laughs> <laughs> if they, just they, died. If they just kept doing that before the merge like i don't know that would have changed the game forever though <laughs> that way, yeah, somebody somebody dying <laughs> would definitely change the game forever it's also known as the game wouldn't be on television <laughs> no, the game must go on our friends are dying left and right out here <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awful no time to strategize Okay, so with that being said, we have uh, got to give us some awards out, of course. No, that's right. Okay. You have the Acuity of the Season Award. Yeah, I got to give it to Young Kelly. Yeah. Young was, uh... Kim or... or... Yeah, oh, Young Kim, I mean. Who's <laughs> Young... Kelly? <laughs> was there, were there two Kellys, too? I remember there was two Kims. No, Kelly was the one that Lex was paranoid about and got voted out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she's second place. Kelly's second place. It was Young Kim. That's what I give it Young to. Kim. Yeah. Who played such a huge role this season? Oh, Gotta give it to role. her. Huge <laughs> role. She was I the biggest she was player. <laughs> winner for sure. No, not really. <laughs> but uh 
No, yeah, she was she's cute. I mean, um, in terms of in terms of uh, good looking dudes, though, Ethan. Uh, I, actually, I actually liked Ethan. Ethan's a pretty good looking guy. I think he's a professional Ethan's soccer player. So of course, and he's not. He's like he wouldn't have been my first choice to think as someone who would have won won the season yeah, me either. either. Me neither. Like he's like the perfect the perfect specimen. So it's like that's the person you think would be like an easy target. Yeah, but it's maybe just because he was so reserved, he got to be a little bit more of a wallflower and just yeah, um, bide his time throughout the whole the whole time. Other 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 awards. Yeah, do you have a a favorite player award? Favorite player. Um, I did really like Clarence a lot, um, but I really I got to give it to Big Tom. He was Big just Tom. just so <laughs> the the things that came out of his mouth were you you were commenting on that like more than me, but you were just like. He's just like literally every time he says anything, I have no idea what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, that was just he was just immensely entertaining to watch. He was just a funny guy. Mm -hmm. Um, you got him drinking with the Lex on that one yeah. thing. That those those rewards where they got the pair up were made for interesting moments too. I think like yeah, little, little Frank, bonding trips. Frank and Brandon. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> their little date and watching out of Africa in Africa, which that was like I had like said that I was like we we're gonna go see a movie and I was like I wonder if they're gonna watch out of Africa and sure enough <laughs> that was what they're watching. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. There, that's that's who I'd side with. I think so. Yeah, Tom's a good one. He yeah, he a lot of a lot of screen time. They. They knew he's like gold when, it, when after they had the season done. For sure, they're in the editing room. And they're like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is this so is just gold." gold. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, since I'd like to kind of do this as we go along, if you mm -hmm. could rank the season so far, how would you rank them? And then we just continue right. as we go on, add the seasons into the rankings. Hmm. I know my ranking. For sure. Okay. I want to say, hmm, this is actually pretty tough because, like, two and one, I always think about. I, I think, I think, I ultimately, in in reflection, I think I ultimately liked season two more, even though season one had me more captivated. Because I was watching. And it was really interesting seeing, um, uh, seeing Rich just. To get planned so deviously from from the get go, um, it's just an amazing kind of like an amazing character study. That whole show, um, I'd probably have to still do two one three. I still want to rank because of how slow this season was to start. Um, it was kind of dull for the first few episodes, so I think I'd still put this as like probably the least favorite season so far. Even though there were some really great moments and some pretty good highs, some of the highest highs I think, uh, like. Overall, the the challenges for the most part were actually really solid this season. I don't think there were really too many that we were like uh, that didn't really work too well with shooting or um, I don't know what's going on. That that happened a little bit towards the beginning. Oh, yeah, how about that? How about that legendary from, boulder challenge? <laughs> the boulder challenge. Yeah, that was that was they a always, nightmare. They to watch. kept um, referencing back to it too. Oh, we survived the boulder yeah. challenge. Um, for the most part, though, they were a little bit more consistent. They had they had some that were really physical. There was a lot more mental ones put in there too. I think they did a good a good blend of both of them in this one. So I think overall, that's that's the best that they've done so far. But mm -hmm. that being said, just that that beginning was was just pretty dull. So and yeah, I mean, and, and that's the beauty of Survivor too is that like you can have you can be so many seasons in they could like refine the. Uh, the format to be as good as it possibly can be and mm -hmm. they can still just like fall flat or it could be really good just depending on the players and how they do it. Yeah. Cause like they can have minor intervention, but ultimately it's up to the players to determine how it goes. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's one, two, three. Oh, okay. All right. I think, I think Borneo is just so good. It, in, it's, like, it's, 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 it is an amazing scene. Probably if you ask me this like a week later, I'll probably say the same thing you did. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's it is an amazing season of the show. It really is. Like what a what a first season, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. So and like every season has these these players that aren't as interesting and they kind of aren't as present. But I still feel like the first season had a lot of interesting characters. Season two, 
had a lot as well. Mm-hmm. And a lot of interesting interactions, but I think Richard Hatch is just like such a such a force. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. And like even third season in, I still think Richard Hatch has played the game the most out of anyone. He's, he's still my favorite player for sure. Like it's what a what a guy. <laughs> it's just wow. Um, like but, most, like not only did he play the game really well, but he's also entertaining as he did it too. Yeah. He wasn't just like a boring guy who just knew how to play the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, lastly, if you want to rank the winners know what number one is yeah but. uh so it's between uh richard hatch ethan and tina remind me it was tina i mean richard hatch is number one i think i'm gonna do a one two three again um because even though tina kind of won because uh um remind me who colby colby basically handed it to her <laughs> mm-hmm. um she was still she was still like a, a solid player of the game. She wasn't like overly strategic. She was just kind of a good, nice person. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly it, that's a coin flip between me and uh, between um, between her and uh, her and Ethan. Um, I do think I would say one, yeah. two, three, also because Tina, yeah. I think, is a more interesting story for her her getting to the end and winning as opposed yeah. to Ethan getting to the end. Um, because like Ethan was kind of always in a, a good position in the game. He was always, he, he was, he did, he did position himself really well from the, from basically from the beginning. Yeah. And he, he kept, he kept winning rewards. You know, he just had, yeah. this, he had this privileged life out there. Yeah. You know, had the struggle. She was on, she was on the bottom at some parts and, she I don't think she. Start. I don't think she ever won a reward, either. Did she ever win immunity or anything like that? I don't think she did. I can't I'm trying remember. To remember. Yeah, she might have won immunity once. Yeah, but... I feel like she did. Yeah, but ultimately, it's like it's also a more interesting story that like yeah. Colby Colby goes to the end and like makes this dramatic mistake, whereas like Kim goes to the end and just picks Ethan to win. Yeah, so, essentially, yeah. That's true. Yeah, it does make it more interesting in terms of like a narrative. It's it's more interesting that it's like he makes the mistake and she wins kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But Richard Hatch, yeah. something else. Oh, yeah. He's yet to be beat. And next we have Survivor Marquesas. That's right. Which is another season I haven't seen. I thought it was the last one, but there's actually one more. This like I watched like two seasons after the next one, and then I skipped the next one. So okay, okay, uh, one more I haven't seen after that, but I do know the winner, unfortunately. Yeah, of course. Well, <laughs> but I don't. If they're all new. They're all new to me. So yeah. So as we as we go on, we can continue to rank them and see how it changes over time. Absolutely. Because it's so hard to like go back. It'll be a lot easier to build, but it's hard to go back after like thirty seasons and be like, "All right, here's my list," because like the recall is not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, that's it. All right, Survivor cool. Africa, beautiful. Survivor Africa. Thank you for watching. That's it. Bye bye.